do in my mind. Having your Bible, if you will, I ask you to turn to Acts uh, 14 and 15. We will end up, uh, uh, we will uh, start at the beginning of the end of 14, and then we'll work our way into chapter 15. And most of you uh, know that for about six months, seven months, we've been actually studying the book of Acts. For the book of Acts is actually a record of the early church. That's where we find the new covenant church. If you start reading in the book of Acts, that's where you will see where the church, the new covenant church actually started. It took off and now we can read the experiences of the saints, the early saints, as God established his new covenant church in this world which was unlike the different church of the Old Testament. It is unlike it to a great extent in that in the Old Testament, we find that God mainly dealt with uh, the children of Israel as the children of God. Amen? Amen? There were exceptions whereby some who uh, dwelt with the Jews, they actually uh, converted over into Judaism. But what had to happen is they had to then disseminate uh, themselves into the culture and everything of the Jews mm -hmm. to include circumcision and everything else. But now in the New Testament church, we find a different situation altogether. And that is that God looked at the Jew and the Greek and or the Gentile the exact same. That conversion was the same for everybody. And it is not respective of nationality. Amen. It is respective of totally our faith in God through the finished work that Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Now in the Old Testament, it was actually the same way that a person was saved by their faith and not by their works. They actually were saved looking forward to the cross. In other words, they had faith in God that the Messiah would come and would offer himself sacrifice for them. So they believed in what would happen you and I believe in what has happened. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and so to that extent, we have a common bond with those of the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. So having uh, said that and understanding that, now I ask you, if you will, uh, if you will go to uh, chapter 14, we're going to read verse 27 and then in chapter 15, we're going to read verse 2, 4, 5, and 10. 2, 4, 5, and 10. When you have found uh, those two chapters and those verses, say amen and stand on your feet. <clears throat> okay? For those of you who have not found it, you shall find it up on the screen. But I always invite you to bring your weapons of war into the war room. For we really are in a war. Did, did you know that? We really are in a war. Yes, we are. And, and the good thing about it is there are few battles that you go into that you already know the outcome. See, but we as Christians, we know what the outcome is. We don't have to bite our fingers and sit down and worry. We already know that we are victors if we be in Christ. Amen? Amen. Because really, Christ has already won the war. Really. Amen? Amen. So, uh, verse 27, read as if you're reading unto God, and you are. Read, please. And when they were come, and had gathered the church together, they reversed all that God had spoken unto Moses, and all the people of Israel were gathered together. Turn to your neighbor and says, Oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, oh, neighbor. Always, remember always remember what God has done, what God has done for, you. for you. 
always remember what God has done for you and teach it to your children and your children's children that they may know that you serve the one and only true and living God. Oh neighbor, remember now what God has done for you. Drop down if you will and go to verse 2 in chapter 15. Read please. When therefore Turn to your neighbor and says, oh neighbor, oh neighbor, there will all be ways be, be some who will add to, some who will add to the, gospel. the gospel. Oh neighbor, oh neighbor there, will be, there will always be those who add, those who add to, the to the gospel. But oh neighbor, oh neighbor I, will you, I will say to you, it is Christ. It is and nothing, else. and nothing else. It is Jesus Christ, is Jesus Christ hung, on hung on the cross, died for our sin, for our sin buried in Joseph's tomb, tomb, raised again on the third day, on the third with, day all with all power in his hand, in his hand. Ascended, up into ascended up into heaven, sitteth now at the right hand of the throne of God and maketh intercession for you and I. Oh neighbor, Christ plus nothing. Drop down, if you will, to verse 4 and read verse 4, please. Read. Tell your neighbor, there we go again. There we go again. Talking about, Talking about the, goodness the goodness of God. Talking about, Talking about what, God has done. what God has done. Don't you know, Don't you know everything, everything that is good in your life, that is, good in your life is, a is a gift from God? It wasn't you. It, wasn't you. it, is, God. it is God. Oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. Don't, you Don't you realize that God has been at work in our lives all of our life. Give him praise, if you will. Read number five, please read. So your neighbor says, oh neighbor, oh neighbor you, can you can bring, bring old, habits old habits into, into the, church the, the, church into the church of a living God. Oh neighbor, oh neighbor don't, you don't you realize just because you got saved, you got saved does, not does not mean that you are rid of, rid of all your old habits. All The church is actually playing with a bunch of folks who bring old habits and try to put it up for righteousness. Let's leave that and go to verse 10, if you will. Read verse 10 with enthusiasm, please. Read. Read that again. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the 
disciples, which be the our fathers, nor we were able to bear. Turn to your neighbor and says, oh neighbor, your neighbor. Stop, putting stop putting yokes on folks. Yokes on folks. Oh, neighbor, oh neighbor, stop putting, stop putting yokes, on folk. yokes on folk. Put Jesus, put Jesus, put Jesus, put Jesus first, and first and foremost. Put your yokes away. Put your yokes away. They, are no good they are no good to you, to you or, anyone else. or anyone else. Give God praise if you will. Go to your seats. God is just an awesome God. As, as we look at the word of God, as we continue, uh, just a little bit of background is, is uh, Paul and Barnabas has been going through out Asia Minor. And they have been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they have been preaching primarily to the Gentiles. Though they preached to the Jews as well, the Jews did not receive them as well as the Gentiles. And so every place they went to, you will find the first place they went was into the synagogue. And in the synagogue, there they would proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they have now gone throughout Asia Minor. And if you remember correctly, they actually, on their missionary journey, they started from the church at Antioch. And so it was the church at Antioch that called them together, and the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit gave utterance. Mm -hmm. And so there the church called them. They had a service and laid hands upon them. They blessed them, and they sent them out to the Gentiles. And so now they have now come back. They have actually gone around, and now they are, have come back and they are making a report to the church at Antioch. Now you'll remember that when we started off, the scripture declares that it was first at Antioch whereby they were called what? Christians. In other words, that was the first place that the term Christian was applied to the church. Now in that day, it's almost like this day. It's just not as bad yet as it was with them. To be called a Christian in that day was not a favorable thing. They, they, they called them Christians, in other words, to say that they were with Christ and they believed in Christ, which was at that time taboo. It's getting to be that way in America. Yeah. Right? They don't mind you saying that you believe in God. They don't mind you saying that. But when you say, I'm a Christian, that's when the hair start to rise on folks' neck. Because they say that you are a religious bigot. They say that you are haters of other people. No, we don't hate other people. And we've done a poor job, I think, at us actually teaching the word of God. And that is this. See, though Jesus taught against sin, he loved the sinner. And so we ourselves have got to separate our personal likes and dislikes and our personal our personalities from the gospel. And that is this. We too should hate the sin, but love the sinner. Amen. Yeah. For the Bible has said, declared that you and I are to love even our enemies. So that's what Paul and Silas did. And great multitudes had come to believe in God 
through the finished work that Jesus Christ had done on the cross. And so they had been added to the church. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And now they come back to Antioch. And there are some who had left Jerusalem from the church at Jerusalem where Jesus' brother James was the pastor. And they had come down to Antioch. And now they were teaching in the church. And now, wait a minute. Stop, stop. They were saying, wait, Paul and Barnabas. They didn't do it right. They didn't do it right. No, you have to be circumcised also in order to be saved. That's what verse 1 is. You got to be circumcised in order to be saved. Now, what I say to us is there will always be people, self-righteous folks in the church of a living God who think they got a monopoly on Jesus. And they want to pour out their plus on you to make you feel inferior about being a child of God. But let me tell you this. There are no inferior children of God. There are no stepchildren in the family of God. There are no throwaways in the family of God. A child of God is a child of God. It doesn't make any difference how long your granddaddy and your great granddaddy and everybody else, how long they've been saved and know how long they've been lost. Every person is saved or lost based upon their faith in God through Jesus Christ. That's what the words say. So they came and they say, wait a minute. You have to be circumcised. And the scripture declare that they caused the big ruckus in the church. When they say there was no small, in other words, there was a knockdown drag out in the church of Antioch about whether people had to be circumcised in order to be saved. There was a, a huge thing. And so what happened is, is they had to get together and they surmised that this cannot be settled here. We can't settle this matter here in Antioch. We got to take it back to Jerusalem. We got to take it back to Jerusalem. And they did. They went back, Paul and Barnabas and others, they went back and they go to the church at Jerusalem. Now there is much discussion there about the same subject. And so there's a big mess. And so they call the first recorded council of the New Testament church is right here in Acts 15. There is no other place recorded in scripture that actually tells us that they actually convened the council prior to this day. Now, I believe they did, but this is so important that it is actually chronicle in Scripture. And so they are there, and now they are having this dispute in the council, and they got all of the apostles. Think about it. There's Peter, James, all of the apostles. John, uh, Nathaniel, all of them, they are there as well as the others who have been actually brought into the council. And they are hearing this matter. And listen to me carefully. It is a heated discussion. If you read on, you'll read the Pharisees came into it and they were adamant. You must be circumcised according to the law of Moses and the custom of Moses. Well, they really even misquoted that because circumcision actually started with who? Abraham. Abraham was the beginning of circumcision. And so they were absolutely adamant that that should be included 
in whether a person was saved or not. Now listen to me again, if you will. When you and I, regardless to whether we are preachers or pastors or whoever, when we start to incorporate something else in the gospel, we have run afoul of the will of God, and it doesn't make any difference what our titles are, we are absolutely wrong. The scripture says that Peter, hearing this, after a while, I guess, he had as much as he could, and then he stood up. And he said to them, men and brethren, in other words, listen, some time ago, you know that I was the one who went and preached to the Gentiles. In other words, the word of God went to the Gentiles through me. And that I am the one who God instructed to go to the Gentiles. And they actually received the gospel and were saved just like you and I. Not only were they saved, but they were filled with the Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just like you and I. Now listen carefully to me if you will. There are a bunch of spiritual quacks who will tell you that if you don't speak in tongues, that you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. That is not in the Bible anywhere. Thank you, Lord. Some do have the gift of tongues. And some don't. Listen, I speak in tongues, but it was long after I was saved and filled with the Holy Spirit that I ever spoke in tongues. So that tells me absolutely emphatically, I can tell you the day, the time, and the place that God saved me and filled me with the Holy Ghost, and no quack can tell me differently. And I did not speak in tongues that day. And so what I'm saying is, let us, if we are ever to witness to anybody, if we are ever to teach the, and spread the gospel to anybody, just give them the gospel and that's it. Uh -huh. Because otherwise, we put a yoke, a spiritual yoke around the necks of people. And that's why people are running around trying to be saved by their own means. You cannot be saved by your own means. Peter, tell them, why do you, number one, tempt God? See, when we do something... Outside of the word of God, we are actually tempting God because you put yourself in God's place. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. And that's a dangerous position for any of us to be in. Doesn't make any difference what our title is. And so Peter says, why do you tempt God? And then now, why do you put a yoke on these people? They've been saved. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit just like we were. But you know what? There are too many people who are in the body of Christ who want to elevate themselves to be super Christians that we want to make and we make other people feel inferior by adding something to what God has said. God does not need our help. He does not need our help. Not at all. Peter was telling them it was 10 years ago. This is now A.D. 51. In chapter 10 of the book of Acts, when Peter is up on the rooftop and see this sheep descend down from heaven and what it was, a vision that God gave him that he had to go to the Gentiles and preach salvation to the Gentiles. Peter himself was hung up and he says... I've never eaten anything unclean. I've never, in other words, he's saying, I've never mingled with the Gentiles. And God told him, what I have called clean, let no man call unclean. In other words, it doesn't make any difference 
whether you are black or white or brown or even blue, if you receive, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be saved. Uh -huh. Many church folks, many church folks, we want to bring up what everybody has done. We want to say, well, now, you know, she did this and she, he did that. And he, what about what you did? And so the bottom line is, it's not what you have done. It's what you will do yeah. if you allow God to lead you. So Peter is saying to them, why would you burden anybody else? It is in faith. And that simply put is this. In Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, the word of God simply says, for it is by faith that you are saved, that I am saved. It is by faith that we are saved through, it is from God, it's the grace of God that saves us through our faith. You cannot be saved outside of having faith in God through Jesus Christ. It is impossible. So it's the grace of God through faith whereby we are saved. And then he clearly tells us in uh, verse 9, it is not by works, least anybody should boast. So listen to me carefully. The only thing spiritually that circumcision will do for you is give you pain. Read the Bible. There are some people, a few years ago, there's a church here in Beaufort whereby the pastor actually taught, yeah, no, 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 you, you, you're a man, you need to be circumcised. And guess what? I mean, educated people went and got circumcised that had not been circumcised. Absolutely did. Right here in Beaufort. And now let me tell you something. That is pain, y'all. Why am I going through some pain that God has already relieved me of? Why am I going through some pain because you decided that I ought to? You want somebody to go through pain? Go through it yourself. But God has freed me from that. Turn to your name and say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. Thank God, Thank God I'm free. I'm free. Jesus, said, Jesus said, whom the Son, whom the Son has, set has set free is free indeed. Is free Thank, indeed. God Almighty, Thank God Almighty, I'm free. I'm free. Don't let nobody put spiritual yokes around your neck. Don't let anybody tell you and put a requirement on you that God has relieved you from. Don't do it. The Bible says, Romans 10, 9 and 10. For if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that Christ is raised from the dead by the power of God, he said, you shall be what? Saved. You shall be what? Saved. Shall be what? Saved. Ain't said nothing about circumcision. Didn't say anything about speaking in tongues. Didn't say anything about you had to go back and you got to undo this and you got to undo that. It's undoing. God undid it when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. He undid it. Glory. Verse 10 of Romans 10. It says, for we are saved unto good works. Your good works do you no good until after you've been saved. Uh -huh. There's a whole lot of folk trying to work their way into heaven. And guess what? They are just as far away from heaven as they were 25 years ago when they started their work. Because my good works will never get me one inch closer to heaven. Never. Don't let anybody fool you. But listen, the scripture repeatedly says that Paul and Barnabas rehearsed what God had done. Don't miss that. Don't miss it. If you go back everywhere they went, 
they rehearsed in their report. They rehearsed what God had done for them. And I truly believe one of the problems that we have had in our race and in our nation, one of the problems that we have had is we have stopped rehearsing the absolute awesome power of God to deliver in our family. Sometimes, so many times, we don't want to hear. We've stopped talking about where God has brought us from. And that stifles our blessings. Every one of us in our personal testimonies of the power of God, if we've been saved, every one of us ought to be able to go back and tell where God brought our great, great grandparents from. We ought to be able to say that. We ought to know. We ought to know that we were not always where we are now. So many of us have gotten so high and so mighty and so educated and so highfalutin until so many of us, we don't even talk about where we come from. There are so many whose parents actually came from the slave fields in the south, gone to Ohio and different other places and won't come back here. Many of them will not come. I got some in my family. Who? Oh, well, now, I don't know. Yeah, I'm from Georgia, the backwoods of Georgia. I'm proud. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. My wife used to tell me all the time, she says, you're so country, and I say, I'm so glad. <laughs> oh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. <laughs> Lord, I'm glad. Listen to me carefully. Don't you realize that you are descendants of some of the strongest, most courageous people that ever set foot on the ground in this world? We ought to realize that our four parents have actually paved the way for what we are enjoying this day. We did not get it ourselves. It was by the grace of God that we are who we are. I just left a family reunion two, three weeks ago on my father's side. I sat in a hall and I saw as they displayed up on the screen. And I thought I'm pretty good at history and family history. I saw on the screen where my great, great, great grandmother was born in the slavery. And 11 years later, she gave birth to my great, great grandfather in slavery. 10 years, 10 year old girl actually impregnated because she was breeding like a horse. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And tears ran down my face knowing and understanding that my great-great-granddaddy is born to an 11-year-old. How in the world could she give any guidance to him? But by the grace of God, yes, only by the grace of God, yes. it is the power of God, nothing but the power of God. Now in our families, I look around and we see lawyers, you see doctors, you see people of great essence and great. Because God has blessed us. We need to rehearse the awesome things that God has done in our lives. We need to stop telling people and treating people as if we were always holy. No, I was not. If you want a pastor who was perfect, you got the wrong guy, baby. Amen. I was out there. I was wayward. They taught me what was right from the beginning. And it is important that we teach our children. Yes, sir. 
I don't care what anybody say. A child, if you teach a child, if you bring up a child in the way they should go, as the Bible says, if you bring them up the way they should go, when they are old, they will not depart. No. Listen to me carefully. Listen. He, he or she might wobble. He or she might, they might stumble. Because we did. But listen to me carefully. That word is in them. It is in them. That word has power. That word is alive. Hebrews 12 and 4 says, Now the word of God is alive and is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. The word of God cut in my heart when I didn't want to have God to rule in my life. He cut, he cut, he cut. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I'm thankful. Yes, sir. I am so thankful. It's not because I've been good, but it's because God is good. Yes, he's good. And for all you self-righteous Christians who own your righteous high horse, you are absolutely ineffective because you won't tell your children and you won't tell your family and you won't tell those who you're trying to, to witness to. You won't tell them the truth. Yes, Lord. Nah, nah, nah. Jesus said, John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, the, the sad part about it is, is we were all miserable wretches undone. Yeah. We were all yeah. lost in our sin. But thank God Almighty, Jesus died on the cross. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. They used to sing that song in Georgia. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So I say to all of us, let's stop wrangling over the things that God has not put on us in the first place. Let's stop putting yokes on people and let's start loving people the way God has called us to love. And if we have a disagreement, listen, let us disagree in love. We don't have to agree on everything. There's a whole lot that we can disagree on. But listen, but if we have love, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. The only reason there's schism in the church of a living God is because you, we got a bunch of self-righteous folk who won't exercise love in our dealing one with another. Uh -huh. Because love will cause me to step across that line. To, to, to meet you where you are. And I can say for years and months, well, I, I told her and I offered to her and I asked her to forgive me. So I ain't going by that child. <laughs> ain't nothing but the devil. <laughs> nothing but the devil. And you hide behind God. Yeah. Mm, no, no. Listen, love will cause me to go back again. Love will cause me to go back again. It will cause me to go back again. Peter asked Jesus, they asked Jesus, how many times should I forgive? And Peter jumped up and says, seven times, Lord. He thought he was doing something. He thought he was a big shot spiritually. He thought he was doing something. Jesus told him, no, 70 times seven. That's 490 times in one day. It is impossible. It is impossible. For somebody to sin against you and then come and now you in your mind calculate and say, okay, now I was taught to forgive and to love. So you go and you forgive them. You, it's impossible to do that 470 times. Uh, and you know what? Jesus knew it when he said it. So what he was telling him was as many times as necessary. Yes, sir. You got to do it. Yes, sir. That's what he was saying. Yeah. Turn to somebody and says, oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. We gotta change our ways. Oh neighbor. We gotta change our ways. Love. 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 In the name of Jesus. We gotta love. 
the hell, the hell out of people. Out of people. Thank you, Lord.